Right, so now we move on to item 7.2, which is the Wairapa Destination Management Plan. And um, it's Glenda as well. And um, Anna Nelson, I think, is joining us online as well to yep. speak to it. Oh, oh, you're here. <laughs> I didn't even see you. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, so, so um, it's yours, Glenda, but um, you're welcome to Anna. Yes, I am. I'm just going to hand it straight over to Anna. She's the expert in this area. <laughs> <laughs> Um, kia ora everybody, um, look it's wonderful to be sitting here with the finished product, the destination management plan which we spent uh, over 12 months consulting on, developing, tweaking, um, discussing, researching and it, uh, it really gives me great pleasure to be sitting here with this. Um, it is a plan for the success of tourism in our region. Uh, for all partners involved, and of course, council is a major partner in that. And so, I'm really excited to be sitting here with um, with you all to to talk about what we've got for the future for tourism and to do it in the right way. So, have any questions? Because I know that you've already read the plan, um, and so you're very you're fully briefed. Is there any concerns or worries or questions that you may have for me? Yeah, thank you, Anna. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll go. I'll go around the room again. So um, start with you, Jill. Um, no questions. It's been very well professionally put together, so it gives one great confidence that it's the right thing. And as you say, you've been consulting for twelve months, and that's a long time to do that. So I'm sure you've got the right what what the what the wire wrapper actually requires. So thank you. Thank you, Kira. Rebecca. Yeah, I've got a, a few questions for you, Anna, and possibly um, one for Glenda too, actually. Um, the, I probably should just preface it by saying that overall, um, I think this is a, a really fantastic document um, with, some, with some great re uh, supporting research, and I, and I really support the vision and priority areas that you have identified. Um, my questions are more around the, the council aspects that you've addressed within the report. Um, and my first question is, who owns this plan? Because I, I like previously, I had thought that Destination Wairarapa would own the plan, but reading through Glenda's um, accompanying report and some of the feedback within that, I'm, I'm wondering, is that the case? No, it's, it's not actually owned by Destination Wairarapa. We have a, obviously a very important part to that, and we own the destination marketing part of the plan. Um, but because tourism involves all aspects of business, community, um, infrastructure, transport, um, there's so many different aspects of it. If just Destination Wairarapa was to own this plan, nothing would get done. Um, the, the framework destination management planning is something that MB um, has been researching for some time, and it's a, um, a framework or an approach to tourism that has been adopted in other countries around the world. And it's a sustainable or, or regenerative is, is the, the buzzword these days. And I, I personally hope we get to that point. Um, but it is, it is a solid foundation of, of managing destinations appropriately. Um, in that framework, it is suggested that it's governed by all partners who are um, actively involved in tourism. Um, we actually have that framework already set up, and that's the Wairapa Economic Development Strategy Group. Uh, it has all the key people sitting around it, whether it be council, whether it be EWE, business sector leads, um, et cetera. And so uh, that is probably the rightful place for it to sit. If it didn't sit there, we'd be creating another structure which absolutely mirrored that same one and uh, would have the same membership on it because of the the nature of our region, there's only so many people um, that can that fulfill these roles. Um, so that's that's where it should rightfully sit. And as as the council is part of the Wairapa Economic Development Strategy um, or Wairapa Economic Development Forum, um, part of the partnership group. Awesome, thank you. Um, my my next question is um, just a clarifying, I guess. Um, in, in the document, it says something around um, a higher level of engagement and consultations on page 17 by councils with the tourism industry and operators on a long-term plan that ensures sustainable growth of the visitor economy um, is, should be sought. Is, 
Is that referring to the destination management plan or is it additional to that? So um, you, the Carlton District Council already, um, I'll, I'll backtrack a bit. Um, there was a lot of desktop research done originally about um, where tourism sat within Wairapa and within the governance structures that exist, so the three different councils. Um, there is only one council that refers to tourism as a sector, and that is actually the Carlton District Council, and your long-term plan refers to it. Uh, the other two don't. So it is more of a, remembering this is a plan for the region and for all stakeholders, it's, it's more of a signal to a couple of other um, councils that they need to um, come to the same level or the realisation that, that this council has. Excellent. Okay, that, that clarifies that. Um, final question is around your strategic goal 1.2, which you've highlighted as a priority, um, and around ensuring that there's clarity and roles and defined responsibilities um, to ensure that the plan is um, and the region is managed effectively. Did you have any thoughts on how this could be achieved? Did you have anything in mind? Um, a lot of it that comes down to the, when this was written, it wasn't clear whether the, um, this document would sit under the WEDS group. Um, since then, it has been discussed at, at the, the last meeting. And although not formally acknowledged, it, it has been um, spoken about that this is where naturally it would fit. And I guess it came to that, that there needed to be a strong governance group who were um, leading the, the, um, the delivery of the plan. But within, within that, there'll be natural people who will take um, leadership in, in each of the different uh, action points. As I said, destination marketing is definitely a destination wire thing that we would take leadership on. But when it comes to, as an example, if this is a, when it's happening in practice, we just filled out an application for the tourism infrastructure fund. And that was something that um, Blender and I and Joe worked on collectively and referenced this document to show that the government that um, we were working in collaboration and that um, strategically we'd already discussed what was required for this region. And so in that case, obviously the council takes the, um, the leadership role in that particular project. Awesome, thanks so much. Thank you, uh, really good questions, Rebecca. And uh, yeah, very indeed, good answers, Anna, thank you. Yeah, um, Steve. Um, I don't have any um, questions as such, Greg. I just have a few comments, so I'm happy to wait. Okay, thank you. Brian? You have, uh, I've just got one question, probably um, in the financial impacts. Um, uh, the action plans that are yet to be developed, um, and it says here, they've done correctly and collaboratively, there should be no surprises for each of the council in terms of financial contributions. Um, just a question around that, um, the impacts of the financial con contributions um, yet to be developed, um, um, and hopefully with no surprises. Can you just enlighten us a little bit on that, Anna? And, um... Um, sure. This is a long-term plan, um, much like your, your own long-term plan. So it, it, it paints a picture of a future that our community want for us when it comes to tourism. It is not something, it's not a two-year plan, it's not a five-year plan. It's a plan for us to collectively work together to achieve success in tourism and whether it's um, so social, cultural, um, environmental or um, economic, it's, it's heading in the right direction. As the person who actually wrote this, Kylie Luthu Karawana, said to me, it's, it's the opportunity to have all our walkers lined up in the same direction and, and, and paddling in the same way. When I say no surprises, when we're all lined up and we're paddling in the same direction and at the same speed, we'll be discussing what's a priority for our region? What do our people need? Is it an environmental thing? Is it a social thing? Is it, a, is it an infrastructure piece of work that we need that we'll be discussing together in partnership? 
And the decision will be made together as a region, whether it's a council, whether it's a particular community group of people. Um, and so therefore there'll be no surprises. We'll either prioritise it and think it's the right thing to do at the time, or we'll say, not quite now, we can't afford it, or the government will put some money up and we'll say this is absolutely the time that we all need to get behind this because that's what we've agreed is something we want to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Anna. Thanks, Brian. Um, Dale. No, no, no questions, just a comment, so I'll wait in line after Steve. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Robin. Yeah, ditto. Just, just a couple of comments, but all good. Yeah, thank you. And I've just got a few comments as well. So um, uh, it's, just, it's just our round listen to the discussion, Anna, but um, thank you very much for presenting and the work that's gone into this. And um, yeah, we, we've had it for a while to read and we've read it and um, yeah, yeah, but we'll comment on that in a sec. So yeah, thank just, you. just a, a final note. Um, recently, the Minister for Tourism, Stuart Nash, spoke at a, um, um, a, a school of policy discussion down in Otago and he talked about the destination management plans. Um, he essentially paid for the development of these plans and he wants them to happen and to be supported. And in return, the government will uh, look to assist us with strategic important projects that we want to get on board with um, because we have a plan that's following a framework that the government believes is the right way to do it. And the thing that I love about this plan is in that 12 months, I pretty much went to every single meeting, consultation process, and I heard our community, our iwi, our business, what they wanted, and I can put my hand on heart and say, they're behind this, and so it gives me great confidence to sit here and um, talk to our fellow partners in tourism that this, this is what we want our vision for tourism to be in this region, and it, it's done in the right way, not at the cost of our culture, our environment, or our well-being. Sure, thank you. Okay, so I open it up for our comment discussion now. And um, Steve, start with you. Thanks, Greg. Um, look, I, I just I just want to comment how um, I think it's a fantastic document. I really do. Um, I, I've written a few things down. I just think it it um, it will really reinforce um, reasons for people to make return visits here and possibly end up moving here permanently. Um, I think you've set yourself challenging goals, but they're achievable. Um, and you've, you have kept those four well-beings at the forefront of your vision in the document. Um, I, I, I like the way that you've used iwi stories, um, Māori stories, and you're kind of opening Pandora's box to all the hidden secrets that are on offer in the wider upper. And I, I, just, I just really, um, think that it's only going to enrich the visitors' experience that do come here. Um, I like the way that you've only mentioned climate change once uh, in the document, but in your messaging, you've used climate, the changes in our climate, to, to um, help people understand that they can come over here and work in the environment and actually make um, a difference while they're here um, visiting. So I, I just, I think it's fantastic. So I, I just really congratulate you on a, on a great document. Thank you. Yeah, here, Steve. Thank you. Um, Dale. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, ditto to what Steve said. I suppose I just wanted to say, you know, I, I've been made aware just recently of a little bit of online criticism of council supposedly dragging the chain on this. And, um, you know, and I just sort of wanted to make the point that it's, it's, not a lack of support from me anyway, and I know the rest of the team, it's been around a bit of timing and a bit of workload, but when I read the report with the next steps, I mean, you know, Masterton Council has received it, but yet to endorse it. South by Arapa hasn't received or endorsed, and even WEDS is still waiting to um, press the light. So uh, if we end up endorsing this in a few minutes, rather than dragging the chain, we'll actually be leading the charge. So I just wanted to make that point um, if any of the public are listening in that in fact, um, you know, we're actually trying to make this work 
not um, not dragging our heels. Thank you. Yeah, car bike. <laughs> um, Brian. <laughs> Okay, um, thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, just to um, mirror what I said before, that I think it's a fantastic document um, and it's really good to see that we have a joint vision across the Wadadapa, which, um, you know, as a partner, a council, we can help with as well. Um, and definitely with funding applications, it's really important to have that, um, yeah, that, co that collaborative approach. Um, I just wanted to note a couple of things that I'm particularly pleased about. Um, one is the approach to support um, developing experiences for families um, as they are some of the key visitors to our region. And also um, as Simone and Lucy will um, realize as well, it has been noted, no, noticed in their community plan um, and feedback that they um, gathered as well. Um, <clears throat> and I think it's important that we have, you know, we appeal to a, a diverse range of, of customers or, you know, target audience within the Wairarapa. So very pleased to see that. Um, the other one is around iwi aspirations, which I think is fantastic. Um, and especially around that rangatahi knowledge is something that I'm quite passionate about um, in handing down of those stories and traditions um, to ensure that future generations will know um, who they are and where they come from. So um, very pleased to see that. And um, final comment is that I'd, I'd love to be continue to be updated on the progress of this plan um, and that we feel that we're still very much involved as a council, even though we will be um, taking over the governance side of that. So thanks, Dana. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, yeah Kira. Joe? I think it's all been said. Yep, thank you. Robin? Yeah, um, ditto to what everybody else says. And um, Dale, when I finally get home, I'm giving you a crunchy bar, mate. That was very well said. Um, and, and along with Rebecca as well, I think um, as a councillor, I would really like to be kept informed. And, um, and I look forward to all three councils endorsing the pan. Anna, it's, we've had a conversation about it before, but it's a fabulous, fabulous plan. And, um, and I really look forward to sort of WEDS actually formalising it and getting some action. Um, the comments sort of from me around, especially the social wellbeings, the, I love the multi-generational approach um, and, and looking at bringing whanau home and, and also the opportunities um, that will come with um, employment as well, sort of. So thank you, um, Anna, great work. Yeah, Kira, thank you, Robin. Yeah, and, and I I think it's just outstanding, really. Um, the Warwick was so well placed um, at the moment, you know, with the work that's gone on with WEDS under Dame Margaret and having the workforce plan, the water, water resilience strategy, and how the Warwick economic development strategy will feed into the Wellington regional strategy. And then that's endorsed by the Greater the Wellington Regional Leadership Committee, uh, which has connections straight into government and have the destination management plan as part of that puts us in a, such a good place and already we're ahead of the game. The workforce, uh, sorry, the regional schools leadership is, is, is almost 12 months ahead of just about every other group in the country and we're leading the country we're already with um, our, our destination, you know, how we're getting the visitors and, and what we're doing with them. And also the key instance is not destroying what we've got and that's a key focus of this destination management plan is resilience. So just appreciating who we are and keeping it like that and yeah, I think Warrior Apple is, is, is actually humming in, and what this is is just fantastic. So thank you very much. Thank you. Can I just wait one last comment? Um, thank you for taking the time to read the plan so in depthly, but also um, for making an effort to, to come up with some comments at the end of it. I, I, it shows to me that you are engaged and you're enthusiastic, and I just want to say a big thank you. That's it's it's um, it's really lovely. Thank you. That's very cool, thank you. Yeah, yeah we love the wire wrapper. <laughs> <laughs> and Carter. Um, yeah, thank you. So um, we've got um, two recommendations and I'm gonna take them both together. Um, so I'll go to one and two, receives the report and endorses the wire wrapper destination management plan. Can I have a mover please? Moved by Robin and seconded by Steve. All those in favor, raise your hand please. 
That's 100 percent. So um, that's carried. Thank you. Well done. So thank you very much. Thank you for the interaction there. That was great.